Hello, I'm Mark Baer. You're watching the Your Town Television Program. I'm with Steve Bagnini, who is the West End Celebration Event Coordinator. See that? Perfect. Uh, we are the day after the election. You've been reelected. This is good stuff. But let's talk about West End, first of all. And uh, h how did you get involved with, uh, with, the, with the event? And, uh, and, you're, uh, and you bring the music. It was 17 years ago uh, when the West End Celebration was first created. After the first year, it was a very small gathering. And uh, Greg Hawthorne, the artist who was one of the founders of the celebration, I had been uh, doing his uh, music for his parties down in Big Sur for many years. So Greg said, uh, would you like to come aboard and uh, bring music you know, to the West End Celebration? So I said, sure, absolutely. And uh, I did the music uh, ever since. And then about eight years ago, they hired me as the overall event coordinator that pretty, does pretty much everything for the event. What, what, what was the, your background in music that you were able to do this? Uh, well, when I was at high school, uh, I was a singer in soul and blues bands. And uh, when I moved to Monterey, I was, uh, had, you know, uh, wanted to start up a band again, and uh, that didn't work out. So I ended up managing bands, and then I ended up starting uh, promoting festivals. And so it's just it's like a second career for me to uh, do music promotion. Yeah, you're, you're you've been steeped in it in the community for a long time, and West End has turned into kind of a phenomenon at this point. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a fabulous event. Um, so I guess uh, let's go with this year. What, do you, what should people expect this year? Well, this year you expect more of, of, of what you've uh, grown to become accustomed to. And this year we have great assortment of artists, as always. And I'm always on the lookout for new, exciting artists. And, and it's hard to get artists to uh, display on the street because uh, a lot of them are, they don't want to come out of the comfort of their studio. So uh, that's my challenge, to always get new, uh, established, as many artists as possible. And uh, I think we're going to have more vendors and artists and craftsmen this year than ever. Uh, last year, the First Night Monterey added a stage. Uh, two years ago, uh, the First Night Monterey had music, uh, so they added a music stage, which we had three music stages going on at the same time. And uh, two years ago, we added uh, Paper Wing Theater, a stage with a theater. And uh, this year, we're adding yet another stage. The uh, group of people, they call themselves Tribe in the Sky. and. Uh, they're going to have a, another music stage, and we're bringing the event all the way down to the other side of Ortiz, where the Hawthorne Gallery is. That's where this festival originally started, and uh, about five, six years ago, it gravitated to the independent. So we're expanding our footprint. We're adding more artists. Uh, we're all inclusive. We try and get as many people uh, in the community involved. How do how, so? Just before we move on, uh, so an aspiring artist, uh, established artist, etc., wants to contact you or contact uh, the West End Celebration. How, how do they go about it? Uh, you could go on our website, westendcelebration.com, and uh, my contact information is there, slvmanagement at yahoo.com. You can contact my email. Or you can find uh, a application to be an exhibitor on the West End Celebration website. So, yeah, if you're an artist and you want to get out there, and even if you're a new artist uh, that's never done this sort of thing, we've had so many artists that they say, oh, this is the first show I've ever done, and now I do shows all over the place. We're very affordable. We charge $129 for two days to display your artwork and you can sell your artwork and recoup your investment. So uh, it's a great opportunity for artists that want to come out and, and share their art with the community. We had um, Dominique Ann on the show who's doing the, the fashion show which is That's quite a, radical and outrageous. Another thing I forgot to, to, to mention, the fashion show is coming back. We had it uh, we missed it last year very much, uh, but they're coming back this year. Uh, they had been with us two previous years. It's going to be in the Hawthorne Gallery uh, 
uh, compound there on the end of the street, and uh, so it's a great addition. DJ Wonder's doing the mix. DJ Wonder. He's fabulous. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, DJ Hanif uh, with uh, Live from the Basement is going to be performing on one of our stages yeah. on Saturday or Sunday. The yeah, Hanif Wonder. Yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah. Uh, there's, there's so much the, of the community that takes part in this festival. And it, it's, it's really a living thing, the festival, how, how it takes place and evolves. So, uh, and, and it's, it's, it is unique. For other, you know, festivals and, and music, what, what's, you know, what are what are those uniquenesses about it? Well, I think the compared to most of the events that take place on the Monterey Peninsula, I think really what's most unique is that it's truly a community event. And you go to the West End Celebration, more and more, everybody tells me this, and they say, when I go to the West End Celebration, it seems like I know everybody there. I see people that I haven't seen in 10 years, I'll, I'll run into them, because it's a local event. A lot of the other events rely on outside attendance from the Bay Area, from the Valley, uh, that make up a, a great deal of the people. So you sort of get lost. And, and it's nothing wrong with that. It's just different. So you go to the West End Celebration, you know everybody. Uh, we have so many of the local nonprofits that participate and have booths. Uh, so many local uh, bands from the Monterey Bay Area will be playing. And then we get regional acts and a national act to, to, to be the draw. But I think what really makes it unique is uh, that it's uh, for and about the community above all. So in a, in a small community, we have a pretty vibrant music scene. Absolutely. And, and let's, let's talk, I'll let you talk about that a bit. Well, you know, uh, it's, it's amazing the music scene that we have uh, here in Monterey County, and I'm not sure uh, what it is or why that is. You know, the Monterey Pop Festival, uh, Monterey Jazz Festival, internationally known, and I think that's been a magnet for people. Uh, it's one of the reasons I moved to Monterey 45 years ago, because the Monterey Pop Festival, I had heard about it, the Jazz Festival. I saw Clint Eastwood's movie uh, play Misty for me, and I said, wow, wouldn't that be cool to walk amongst, you know, and, and here I am just doing what I wanted to do, and I think that's the case with a lot of musicians, and and this, the sad thing is the, the nightclub scene uh, doesn't lend itself towards uh, original music. Uh -huh. we're, we're a small uh, tourist community as far as that goes. So most of the uh, nightlife is for uh, bands that play were, covers. Were you, were you around here at a time when that existed? Uh, when what existed? When, when there was uh, music in the in the at night? Yeah, yeah, I was. You know, I I, I was part of it. You know, uh, I I was involved with the club in Monterey uh, when we had Thursday nights when uh, Los Lobos, Bonnie oh, wow. Raitt, uh, Huey Lewis, wow. all these bands would play all the time, uh, and uh, we had a lot of uh, the old Monterey Music Hall, uh, Bobby and the Midnight's, Ricky Nelson. Uh, but even then, we had all this great talent, but it wasn't supported as much as it needed to be in order to be sustainable. Same, yeah. And, you know, then what happened, I think, is, you know, so much entertainment opportunities for everybody. They stay home, they watch Netflix, yeah. they watch movies, they watch, you know, anything. So it's, it's really hard to do. Uh, but when it comes to festivals, that's when people come out because especially you get the Sunday Blues in the Park in Seaside, which starts up soon. Uh, you've, you've got the Friday Music Concert Series now at Del Monte Plaza. So there's tons of things like that that are free and open to the public. So people come out to that. But, but if you're an original act and you want to promote your music, it's hard to do. Uh, you have to create an event. And, um, and so, so that's, this is kind of the venue that's, that you're giving the opportunity to hear. This is what, and, and I always have on, on one day, uh, Saturday on the Redwood stage, I always have young up-and-coming bands. And, and for the most part, the bands that play at West End Celebration, you know, I'd say 95% of the bands that play there are original acts playing original music. 
we don't book cover bands. And I don't have anything against cover bands, but this they have plenty of places, places to, to go. Play, you to need play. you need the place for the new. You you need the place for the young uh, creative or older creative artists that want to get their original music out to the people. That's right. Um, who's who's the sponsors for West End? Sponsor is the City of Sand City. Oh wow! You know, and and it's it's the Arts Committee, our primary sponsor, and and they put up the 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 money to do the event, and then I go out uh, to the community and try and get other sponsors as well, and we've always gotten support from. Uh, the Orozco's, you know, the, the developers in the community, uh, the Pacific Gas and Electric, Calam. Uh, I go out, Rabobank, the typical businesses that, that sponsor events like this. And then, of course, uh, we get revenue from the vendors that help offset the expenses. But we still, at the end of the festival, we're still in the hole, and that the city is the one that... that puts on that event. It's sort of, it's their gift to the community, mm -hmm. to the to the larger Monterey Peninsula and Monterey County community. Well, I've just been, you know, Sam City is kind of new to me and I've been exploring it and, uh, and I have this in my mind that it's this art city with the, uh, you know, it's it's got the box store uh, tax base and then it's got artists who live in, 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 in their space who can sell out of their space and uh, and and walk to each other and meet each other over coffee and have that connectivity and uh, and collaboration and contact that's needed in in a strong art community and yet we're we're we have the luxury of living in this beautiful place uh, and I I just in my imagination I I said well this could be you know a real art city. And it is becoming that in reality, you know, as the more I explore. And it's very close to, you know, just really taking off. I don't know, it's one or two little ingredients needed to light the match, but it really seems to be something. We need a, a big ingredient. We need a magnet that draws people there. West End Celebration is the magnet. But it's not year long. It's not year long. Yes. We need something. Uh, and, you know, we were really, we had that. For a while, I don't know if you remember. Morgan had the um, can't forget. I, I can't remember what he called it. It was it wasn't Morgan's Coffee House, but it was uh, where Carmel Stone Imports is today. Mm -hmm. He had a uh, a gallery there, which was a coffee house, restaurant, had music there, and that drew people there. Now we have Post No Bills, and that's the closest thing yeah. to Monterey uh, to uh, the West End and Sand City. The brings people. Let's go to Post No Bill, so they go to Sand City, but there are no galleries per se. Sweet Elena's uh, Bakery is that to a certain degree. So you have two things that bring people specifically to Sand City, but other than that, people, there, there's, there needs to be some destinations. So uh, another big restaurant, uh, something that brings people there on a daily basis. So that you could have a gallery there to get the traffic. Exactly. Yeah, that's Because during the week, uh, you know, and my good friend Todd Kruper, who was uh, on the council, who was one of the founding members of the West End Celebration, and uh, he moved away last year. They raised the rent on him. and uh, But his studio was open seven days a week, and he tried so hard, but there wasn't enough traffic to uh, justify paying the rent that so we we need the traffic there we need more destination galleries restaurants whatever so that it's sustainable so if you're an artist and you you want this to happen you need a little bit of the growth you can't you, you can't have this without the other that's correct and and and, and sometimes it comes from support from the local government. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, we were talking earlier about this, that some people are opposed to growth, but with growth sometimes uh, opportunity. comes opportunity yes. and fees that uh, developers pay to the city that they can in turn use to promote this growth amongst the arts element. And I think that's what's needed. You know, there's an eco-resort. If that ever comes to final fruition, Hopefully that will bring in uh, 
TOT to the city and they can spend that money to help. Uh, there was a, a large art gallery that came really close to moving to uh, Sand City last year. It was a uh, nonprofit and they came really close to opening up there, but they needed to be subsidized. And the city wasn't prepared to do that. They didn't have enough money to come in themselves and, and do everything to, to this space to make it a viable gallery. So it needs subsidies. Uh, art is what makes one of the things that makes life worth living. You know, well, it's also, it, 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 it's, it's also part of our heritage and history exactly. here. I mean, you know, I mean, Carmel has been living off our art past for a long time. Absolutely. But you have to, which is fine, but you can't afford to do the art there. So you have to have a place where an artist can afford to live and have a community that's supportive and be a national, you know, you can be a national brand. Uh, I, I see Sand City that can definitely be a national brand because otherwise, uh, if, if you don't use the communications that are possible now to disseminate what's happening, and you can create a big scene in a small area, otherwise you have to be in the city. Yeah. So you can live here and and create the impact, but it has to be thoughtful. You know, the the the, the whole city has to come together to do it. Uh, the the amount of talent here always blows my mind. Yeah. You know, and, you the, know. and the amount of talent that's under the surface, too. People don't realize it, but Michael Nesmith of the Monkees and uh, MTV still has a, a studio in Sand City. Arthur Paley, who's a world known sculptor, still has Al a. Albert, a, Albert. Yeah. And Al, the, uh, his, is here. A lot of yes. people like that that, that are, are under the surface and people aren't aware of. And, and once again, it's always my goal to get them out. Like last year, we had Michael Nesmith do a book signing party and uh, make people realize how many great, wonderful artists and assets we have in the community. So, yeah, so I get, you know, so you certainly have been a visionary on this, and it, it's, it's close, and every, uh, again, with West End, every year it's building, and again, the goal is to make it an all-year celebration, and it can be, uh, I guess that's what we, you know, it's, it's a doable thing. It's a doable thing, and I think, uh, uh, a, a big step in the right direction is uh, Council Member Hawthorne, well-known Big Sur artist, yes. who's also a Sand City resident, uh, is now the chair of the Arts Council, uh, the Sand City Arts Council or committee, and uh, I think he has a great vision, and, and uh, they, they renewed energy, and I think they're going to do some great things, putting on special events throughout the year, uh, putting some more public art throughout the street, so that's a really encouraging development as well. Thank you so much. We are all done. All right. Thank you. I'm Mark Baer. You're with Steve Vagnini. We're talking about the West End celebration. We're talking about Sand City a, becoming a uh, arts destination and a real arts city and branded as such. And, and we're very close. And this is an exciting place to live. And it's a good place for an artist to live. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you.